What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. On today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to make a six ball arsenal using the balls on our current ball chart. Stay tuned after the intro. How to build a six ball arsenal can be a very tricky question because not everyone throws the ball the same way. So it's very hard for someone to tell you what six balls you should add in your arsenal. In this video, I'm going to show you guys the six categories that I have created so that you can make the decision to how you're going to build your six ball arsenal. And then I'm going to show you my six ball arsenal. Let me know down below in the comments what your six ball arsenal would be and why. If you guys like this video and you like the content that I'm creating, I would super appreciate it if you hit that like button, subscribe and hit that notification bell so you can stay up to date every time I drop a new video. And if you like this jersey or any of the jerseys in any of my videos, you can head on over to logoinfusion.com, use my promo code LEWIS, and that'll get you 20% off your entire order. Then down below in the description, I have links to everything that I use to make this video, from the camera to the chamois, the bowling balls, everything in between. I'd super appreciate it if you check out the links down below. The first category that I've created is for the big solid bowling balls. These are the balls that you want to go to when the volume is extremely high and the pattern is on the long side. The balls that I have to choose from for this category are the Jackal Legacy, which as of the time of recording, I still don't have, so I probably will not select this ball. Then I have the Alpha Jackal, the Jackal Ghost, the Forge, and the Forge Flare. Now, ultimately, I chose the Forge Flare as my big solid bowling ball just because of how unique and how special this ball is to me. Typically, in this category, you want to stay in the bigger asymmetrical cores, but this Forge Flare for me has been an absolute home run on the longer and the higher volume patterns. The Forge Flare features the detonator weight block, which has an RG of 2.47 and a max differential of 0.055 in 15 pounds. Wrapped around that detonator weight block is the Coercion MXC solid reactive cover, which comes out of box at a 2000 grit laser scan sand. What I look for out of a big solid bowling ball is the ability to read the front part of the lane really hard, but still have some continuation down lane. It happens all too often when you get into these bigger and stronger solids is that they read the front really, really strong and have zero continuation down lane because by the time they get to the back part of the pattern, they've already used up all of their energy. And that's the reason why I chose this Forge Flare as my big solid option in my six ball arsenal. It reads the front extremely well and then it offers a ton of continuation, especially when compared to other solid bowling balls. Now, obviously, it's not going to be as continuous as other uh, pearls and other uh, weaker solids. But when you compare it to the other really strong solids, this ball has the most amount of continuation with the most amount up front. The big thing to remember with this category is that it's all about being able to handle the really high volumes. So don't be afraid to play with the surface so that you can get the ball reaction that you need my suggestion for your big solid ball is to keep it at around 1,000 or 2,000 and then go up or down depending on what the lanes are giving you the second category is for the big pearl now this category only has two options in it it has the jackal flash and the trident nemesis ultimately I went with the jackal flash over the trident nemesis because I match up extremely better to the flash versus the nemesis now the jackal flash has the predator v2 core which has an RG of 2.47, a differential of 0.054, and an intermediate differential of 0.015. Wrapped around that Predator V2 core is the Infusion HV Pearl Reactive Cover, which comes out of box at a 5,000 grit laser scan polish. Now, what I look for in a bigger Pearl bowling ball is the ability to get as far left as I need to while still creating that down lane shape. And the reason I like this Jackal Flash so much is that not only does it allow me to play as far left as I need to while still creating that motion that I'm looking for, it also handles the oil in the middle extremely well for a pearl. Now, I would argue to say that the big pearl in your bag is going to be one of the most important decisions that you can make for your arsenal. This bigger pearl ball is going to be a ball that you're gonna rely on heavily. So you have to make sure when deciding which ball it's going to be for your arsenal, that it's one that you mesh with. And for me, this Jackal Flash is exactly it. I get into this Jackal Flash a lot, especially when there's a defined down lane friction and I have to create a lot of angle through the front. 
When I get into the weaker pearls, they just don't handle the higher volumes in the front part of the lane as easy as this Jackal Flash does. But that's not the only time that I get into these bigger asymmetrical pearls. A lot of times on the fresh, if there's a lot of friction to the outside, but a, a higher amount of volume, it could be a really good option to throw these asymmetrical pearls on the fresh. When building a six ball arsenal, ideally you want balls in your bag that are going to be extremely versatile. Now, because I use this big pearl in so many different situations, I usually keep this ball at a 4,000 grip. That way it's it has some surface, that way I can throw it on the fresh, but not a ton of surface so that I can really get in and shape it if I need to. The third ball in your six ball arsenal should be your benchmark ball. Now it's very hard to define what makes a bowling ball a benchmark ball. So for me, what I look for is, is typically a solid ball that's extremely versatile and that has a lot of control. Typically it's a ball that you have a lot of trust in and a lot of faith in. It's a ball that you're gonna know what it does every time you throw it. The balls that I put into this benchmark category are the original Forge, the Ripcord Flight, the Tank Blitz, the Venom Shock, and the Venom Recoil. Now, for me, the benchmark ball was the easiest decision that I made in this video. It was the Venom Shock. The Venom Shock is my favorite bowling ball that I have ever thrown, and it screams versatility, which is exactly what you want out of a benchmark ball. I can throw it on the short patterns, I can throw it on the medium patterns, I can throw it on the long patterns, and everything in between, on the fresh, on the burn, it's just a ball that I know exactly what it's going to do for me. The Venom Shock features the gear core, which has an RG of 2.48 and a max differential of 0.034 in 15 pounds. Wrapped around that gear core is the Turmoil Medium Friction Solid Cover, which comes out of the box at a 4000 grit laser scan sand. There's not much else that you can say about the Venom Shock other than it's the ultimate benchmark ball. Now the ball that you choose to put into this benchmark category is going to be the most important decision that you make when building this six ball arsenal because it's going to be the ball that you're going to throw the most, well second most behind your spare ball, but it's a ball that you're going to throw a lot. This is a ball that you're going to throw on the fresh, this is a ball that you're going to throw in transition, and this is a ball that you may go to into the burn as well. Now the reason I say that this ball needs to be the most versatile ball in your bag is because it's not always going to be the first ball the first ball out of your bag. A lot of times for me this Venom Shock comes out of my bag when I am lost or confused and I just need a reliable motion so that my eyes can see what the lanes are giving me so that I can decide what ball I need to be in. Truthfully, there's no easy way to define what makes a ball a benchmark ball, but when you have one in your hands, you just know. And for me, this Venom Shock is the ultimate benchmark ball. When it comes to surface on your benchmark ball, ideally you want a surface that's going to be very versatile. So for me, I keep my benchmark ball at a 3000 grit finish. But again, don't be afraid to play with surface if you need to. The fourth ball in your six ball arsenal should be a medium pearl ball. Now, this is a ball that you're going to go to in transition into game three, into game four, into game five, and so on. It's a ball that you're going to need to clear the fronts when there's a lot of early friction and down lane friction. I struggled a lot with which ball I was going to choose in this category. The options in the medium pearl category are the Supra, the Fatal Venom, and the VIP. Now, ultimately, I went with the Fatal Venom for my medium pearl ball for a lot of the same reasons that I chose the Venom Shock. It is a ball that is very versatile and I know exactly what it's going to do. Now, the reason this category was so tough was because all three of these bowling balls are so good. I genuinely love all three of these bowling balls. The Fatal Venom, just like the Venom Shock, features the gear core, which again has an RG of 2.48 and a max differential of 0.034 but this time the gear core is wrapped around the Infusion Pearl cover, which comes out of box at a 5500 laser scan polish. This medium pearl ball in your six ball arsenal is going to be the ball that you're gonna go to when you encounter a lot of early friction as well as down lane friction. A lot of times the bigger asymmetrical pearls, if there's a lot of early friction, will tend to roll a little bit too early. So you want a ball that's going to clear the fronts and create a nice down lane motion. And this is exactly what this Fatal Venom does for me. When it comes time to deciding what surface 
surface you're going to keep your medium pearl bowling ball at? For me, it can be a little bit of a tricky question because I don't, personally, I don't use polish on anything. I keep this Fatal Venom at a 4,000 grit finish and then I'll let it lane shine over time. For me, when I, when I use polish on the bowling balls, they tend to be a little bit too clean through the fronts and then they tend to be a little bit too responsive in the back part of the lane. Or my big misses are I miss fast. So when I have polish on the bowling balls, a lot of times they'll just go blow right past the break point and end up leaving a five count. For the most part, this medium pearl ball in your bag is going to be that one trick pony. So make sure that it's a ball that you're comfortable with clearing the fronts and that you know that it's gonna create that down lane motion for you. The fifth ball in your six ball arsenal should be a light oil option. This is going to be a ball that you're going to throw on the very short patterns as well as the very light volume oil patterns. The three balls that I put into this category are the Venom Recoil, the Thrill, and the Desert Tank. Now, if you know anything about me, you already know that I chose the Desert Tank for this light oil category. This is a ball that's going to be one of my favorite balls of all time. Any opportunity that I get to throw this desert tank, it's always going to come out of my bag, especially on the lower volumes as well as the shorter patterns. This ball sees a ton of play for me when I can keep it in front of me and when there's a lot of friction to the right. The desert tank features the flux core, which has an RG of 2.57 and a max differential of 0 0.015. Wrapped around that flux core is the magical, magical, magical cover that is the Frixium Plus Pearl Microcell cover that comes out of box at a 2000 grit laser scan sand. The Desert Tank is going to be one of my favorite bowling balls of all time. It is seriously contending with the Venom Shock as the goat ball for me. Whatever ball you choose to be your light oil option, just keep in mind that it's not going to see a lot of lane play. So for me, the ball for my light oil option, the Desert Tank, it's either there or it's not. So what I mean by that is I'm either going to throw it on the fresh or it's not going to come out of my bag. It's typically not a ball that you're going to go to. It's going to be a ball that you're going to throw on the fresh when there is a lot of friction to the right or it's a very short oil pattern. For that reason, a lot of people use this light oil option bowling ball as their spare ball because they're not going to see as much play time as say your benchmark ball. For me, however, because I like to keep the ball in front of me and keep my angles really shut down, this is a ball that I go to a lot. So in practice, if I'm throwing my benchmark ball or my bigger solid or anything like that if I see that there's an extra amount of friction to the right or if I notice that there's the volume just isn't there for these bigger uh, stronger solids I will typically check this desert tank just to make sure to see if it's there and if it's there it's a ball that I'm going to throw a lot now when it comes to deciding what surface you're gonna keep on your light oil option for me because I have a dedicated spare ball I keep this desert tank at a 1000 grit finish now, the sixth and final ball in your six ball arsenal can be a couple of different things. For me, it's a dedicated spare ball. I don't like to throw other bowling balls for spares. I like to have a dedicated spare ball. Now, when it comes to spare balls, we have the Allegiant Sniper, and then I got my hands on a Motive Pride spare ball, which is a pure polyester, no core. It's gonna go nice and straight. I know exactly what it's going to do. Now, if you're one of those people who likes to use urethane or the Microcell balls for spares, then you can use the Desert Tank as your spare ball, and then this six ball, it could be like a wild card ball. It could be a ball that will help you round out your arsenal, or it can be just your favorite bowling ball that just happened to miss out on one of these categories. For me, if I didn't use a dedicated spare ball, my sixth ball would be the VIP or the Supra just because I don't have a high RG symmetrical pearl in my arsenal. There's this really old saying in bowling that says strikes are for show and spares are for dough and it is 100% accurate. To me there's nothing more heartbreaking than throwing an absolute great shot and leaving a 10 pin and then flagging it. This is why I try to focus a big portion of my practices on shooting spares so even when I'm recording videos for this channel if I don't strike, I will still shoot the spare just to make sure that I can stay accurate and stay sharp with all my spares, especially the single pins. You never want to miss a single pin spare. And for me, that is why I use a dedicated spare ball. In my opinion, the spare ball is the most important ball in your bag. A lot of times, it's going to be the difference between you making the cut and not making the cut. I've seen a huge bump in my league average just by focusing on my spare shooting. 
Well, there you have it, folks. There's my six ball arsenal. Let me know down below in the comments what you thought about this video. And if you want to see more tutorials like this in the future, click right here to watch one of my other videos. Click right here to subscribe. Till next time, guys.